At first, we lived on a motionless flat world in the center of the universe, and the sky went around us once every day. But our world didn't stay flat for long. When the sun and the moon are exactly opposite in the sky, we noticed that the shadow of our world on the moon was always a circle, so we had to live on a sphere, the only body whose shadow is always a circle. But why was our world a sphere, and, more importantly, why did we stick to it and not drift off into space? Maybe there was no why, other than the gods made the world that way and they control its behavior through their actions, but there could be simpler answers. For instance, if the universe was made of a few basic elements, and if one of the elements, let's call it Earth, had the natural tendency to get the closest possible to the center of the universe, then it would naturally accumulate there in a huge Earth world, in the most compact arrangement possible, that of a sphere. Because of the Earth in our bodies, we were pulled downward, down being the direction towards the center of the universe. This was a system of explanation, a theory that was simple, elegant, and could explain many facts about the world. Physics was born. In the center of the universe theory, the sky had to be made of a special kind of element, whose natural motion was to move in circles around the center of the universe. So there was one Earth-based physics that applied to our world, and one celestial physics that applied to the sky. The motions in the sky have some regularity. The sun always takes a year to circle through the constellations of the zodiac, the moon always takes a month. There are five other naked eye objects that can also move relative to the constellations, the planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Their motions are more complicated. They sometimes go retrograde, moving backwards through the constellations for a few weeks before going forward again. To explain planetary motion, we tried to construct geometrical models. We gave each planet a circular orbit around the Earth, but to account for retrograde motion, we had to place the planets on little circles called epicycles. For the model to work, the Sun had to play a special role. Its position relative to the Earth was mysteriously linked to the motion of each planet on its epicycle. It took centuries before we realized that this aspect of the Earth-centered model pointed to the fact that the Sun, not the Earth, is the true center of the system. The Earth became just another planet circling the Sun and once we realized that we observed the sky from a moving platform, the apparent motions of the planets suddenly made perfect sense. In the new sun-centered cosmology, only the moon kept going around us. The fact that our world is moving around the sun many times faster than the fastest motions observed on Earth, while spinning on itself, raises some interesting questions. Why don't we feel these motions? Shouldn't we spend our lives clinging to trees or other fixed objects not to be left behind? There is also the question of how the moon can stay in orbit around the Earth as it moves around the sun. This problem was compounded by the invention of the telescope when we discovered that other planets have satellites. We had no choice but to ditch the theory that the universe had one center that dictated the motion of matter. Since there were many centers, the sun, the Earth, Jupiter, the discovery that would unleash physics and lead to our modern understanding of the universe was the realization that all objects, no matter what their composition, have the same natural motion and that it has nothing to do with the center of the universe. This natural motion is simply to continue moving in a straight line at constant speed. In other words, objects have inertia. If an object is not moving in a straight line at constant speed, if it speeds up, slows down, or changes direction, its motion is unnatural, it is forced, and we need to discover which force is responsible. In the absence of force, the planets would move in straight lines and leave the solar system. This means that the Sun exerts a force of gravity that is pulling the planets inwards towards itself. An orbit is simply the compromise between going in a straight line and being attracted by a huge object at the center of the orbit. Now, if every object in the universe attracts every other object, if gravity is universal, there exists many local centers of gravity. 
by combining the concept of inertia and the idea of universal gravitation, it becomes possible to understand a huge range of phenomena, from the trajectory of a projectile near the Earth to the orbits of planets within solar systems or of stars within multiple star systems and galaxies. Contrary to what the first physicists believed, the same physics applies to the falling of an apple and to the motion of the moon. There is one universal physics, and it is valid throughout the observable universe.